do you think tap water is? It's a gay bomb, baby. See, look at the difference. That one image, 1976 to 1998. It's almost like they wiped it out. Isn't that weird? Which one are you looking at? That one right there. You got your little clicker on there. Mars face explained. Oh, yeah. 1996, 1998, and then 2001. Oh, yes. It doesn't even look the same, does it to you? No, not at all. Hold on. Let me let me get in. Let me get in deeper. No, that's not what I want. Yahoo's. <laughs> Open image in new tab. That's what I want. There we go. Look at that. Been big, be beautiful. That doesn't even look the same to me at all. I mean, look at the the shadows and then the way it's crested up higher. You see, like where it looks like an eyebrow, like that rim on your forehead. Yeah. So look at that in the differentiation of. It almost looks like a gorilla face in 1998. It's like somebody smashed it down. Yeah. And took out the pictures there. And then it rises back up in 2001 to an extent, but then there's a bunch of like cracking and stuff too. Yeah. So this looks like it's been. Well, and, and clearly what you can, at least for me, what, what I'm seeing is in 1976, it almost looks like light is coming from it from directly to the side of it. From yes. the side of it. Yep. And then what you have on in 1998 is more of a direct light approach, like almost right above it. Like overhead? Yeah. Yeah. And then in 2001, you have again it coming from the left side of it, but now it's got more light all over. It seems like a 3D rendering as opposed to a real image. And if it's yeah, a 3D uh, rendering, they can make it look like whatever they want. Yeah, or it could be another location on Mars. Maybe there's another mound there. Maybe that's actually a pyramid covered up there or something. You never know. It could be a different, yeah, maybe. Because that looks like a helmet with a face in 76. Yeah. That looks very much like some kind of cultural, like an old, you know, like some kind of statue. Yeah, yeah. It's so very it's be- very difficult only because, one, it's, it's hard because... We just don't know the true capability of these imaging, uh, of their imaging capabilities. You mm-hmm. know, they tell us things, but then then we have we have certain images that come out of Mars that are breathtaking. Yeah, and then you have other things that come out, and you're going, "What?" Well, if AI can make artwork, why can't they do this now? Ah, now you're onto it. You know, and that's really it. I mean, what? I mean, look, this is something that a lot of the the guys that that go deep believe is that what can you believe in imagery and video with what we know can be created by the average person? Mm-hmm. What can we really believe is coming? That's my biggest argument about the modern UFO phenomenon is is when people bring up a video that was taken last year. It's like, dude. Do you not know how easy it would be for anybody to create this with any form of, of knowledge in these programs? Oh, yeah. I have vast knowledge. In there you go. <laughs> how, how hard would it be to create, like, like here's a big one that, that pops up, the ball that, that went through the UAP Senate hearing most recently. It's literally a silver ball just going through the image. How easy would it be to just plop in a fuzzy ball into a, into a video? Mm-hmm. It would not be difficult. I mean, I'm not saying I can do it, but I'm just saying like there are a lot of people that can create a lot of crazy shit. Look at our movies now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can put anything anywhere. Crazy. I could put, you, I could put you on the moon right now if we really wanted to. Yeah. And that information, that ability, that that uh, that capability is available to a lot of average consumers. Yes. Yep. So instead of it before is like, you know, the argument in the 90s was, well, nobody has no, no, the average consumer doesn't have the ability to make things like this. Well, that may have been true in the 90s, but not anymore, man. Yeah, well, yeah, because back then, you know, they filmed in Arizona and now now it's in a studio somewhere, right? (laughs) Exactly. Well, and and my that's the whole thing is if we have access to it now and it's that good, you know, they had access to it in 1976, 1998 and 2001. You know, some, one of the things, that, and I don't mean to divert, but I think it's, it's, it ties it in is with the imaging thing. One of the things that was said during the UAP hearing that I, I completely and utterly disagree with is the fact that they were saying that they're using climate uh, satellites to observe UFOs and UAP. All right. Hmm. Climate satellites take a 10-mile square radius. 
10 miles. So of course you're not going to get anything small. But we no. have, we know that since the 1970s they have had spy satellites that can read a license plate number. Yeah, the Google size order. of a foot. <laughs> So, yeah. so we know what it is, is that they are, they are saying flat out, they're saying, we're not going to give you anything coming out of classified data. If yeah. it, if we caught it on a spy satellite, you're never going to see it. You're never going to see it. If it came out of a classified platform, the public will never hear of it. And that's what it's that mean, meant to me. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, the, the fact that's literally what he said is, oh yeah, you know, we're using climate satellites and I'm like, what? Yeah. You're it's using like litter, a giant swath. I mean, that's exactly what they're designed to do is take capture giant swaths of the earth and analyze it. That's what you're analyzing three foot objects with? You fucks. What are you doing <laughs> that for? Use the spy satellite. So that just says to me, like, they're not going to show you anything they don't want to show you. No. no. So if they come out with shit like this and it looks like a face... Guess what? 50-50 chance they fucking want you to think that. Yep. They just give you a little bit saying, yeah, we're doing this, but we're not going to shake the rest of it, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's just hard to know, man. It's just hard to know. That's the that's the whole point of it. But it's still fascinating. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's kind of like the uh, the whole, um, the way, like, like something else Boris uh, brought up was the alignment of the Sphinx and the Giza pyramids with what seems to be in line, <clears throat> excuse me, with some of these other formations on Mars. There seems to be a, a uh, formation on Mars that is similar to the formation of the Giza pyramids along with the Sphinx. And I'm, I'm going to try and bring that up real quick. Yeah, I've seen that before, actually. Yes, it's almost they correlate almost exactly because there's the three sizes of pyramids. There appears to be something in front of very, very similar in structure. This was another thing Ancient Aliens pointed out was they, they show like in a 3D, uh, they had like an actual model there, a physical model, and they showed <laughs> that when you put the alignments together, it's uncanny. I'm going to put in yeah. Mars yeah, structures. No. That's uh, that's something I've seen as well too, and that is strange. It's seeing that kind of ties get like past ancient culture to past ancient culture on the Earth. Yeah, you know maybe there was two different races of humanoids on Mars and then also on Earth too at the same time. Yeah. Well, let's see. Is this the one? So, <clears throat> yeah. Go ahead. So that one image showing like that top down so you can see the pyramids in a line that matches the stars. So it says Oh, this yeah. one. Yeah, that one. See how it matches the stars there? Yeah. That if we could look at an image from Mars, they're more in line with that. And then there's a mound in front of those. Wow. I wonder... You have the big pyramid, kind of the middle one, and the little pyramid. Yeah. The same same applies to the, the Martian <laughs> pyramids. Yeah, I wonder if there is, I can't find one right now, but I was hoping I could find an image that showed it. But it was really crazy how, uh, you know, they put them together, they showed them. Oh, wait, here we go. Yep, there you go. That is it right there. Look at the Sphinx, too. So see those three pyramidic, yeah. See how those align like that? Yep, hold on, hold on. Yeah, exactly. So it's hard to see if you guys are, you know, are looking at this. So you can see kind of the the pyramids the way they're uh, aligned there. Then there's a little thing on the far right. I don't know if it's mirrored for you guys or not, but I, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. Okay. <clears throat> but yeah, so you can see those three, and then there's that other elongated kind of figure there too, which that would be like the Sphinx. I'm I'm guessing, you know. And, and what we're looking for for the uh, at for those just listening, and again, I highly recommend pluck it out of the show notes, bring it up while we're talking about it. Um, but it is the top down image of the uh, the Giza uh, area, the Giza pyramids area, and then the structures on Mars on a side by side. 
and the alignment is crazy. Yeah, it's very, very similar. Very, <laughs> very similar. much so. Yeah, it's incredibly, incredibly similar. But yeah, it's really, and that's something like, you know, um, I mean, that's something that everybody from Graham Hancock mm-hmm. to, um, I mean, every ancient astronaut theorist that's existed going and, and looking at, again, touching back on the ancient cultures that have talked about this, um, that, that, you know, we came from Mars. I mean, dude, it's, um, well, why did we build pyramids? Right. Yeah. Ask yourself a question. Well, and that's, where did that idea come from? Yes, exactly. That's one of the arguments is where did this civilization get the inspiration, the imagination to create this out of, cause that's what they would have needed. You know, the same argument is with, well, you know, why why is it that the Mayans that created this incredibly accurate calendar uh, with the science to back it up, knowledge of the solar system that turned out all to be accurate fact, not hypothetical, not mythological, um, you know, not metaphorical, it was all accurate, but yet all their other teachings about their origins or metaphors are just yeah. fairy tales? Why? Why did they all of a sudden, my biggest question is, if that's the case, why did they decide to go from chiseling fairy tales onto stone, giant stones, to only chiseling factual, uh, you know, astrology or astronomy onto the, uh, these structures? Why? Mm Mm-hmm. What caused that? And, and and again, what the the imagination needed to these people didn't have inspiration for building these things unless unless it was told to them by other by an ain't a further older civilization that did come from Mars potentially, like the whole yeah. inherited theory that we that the Egyptians inherited all those structures as opposed to built them themselves, right? That makes that makes sense because that shape, you know, the pyramid is supposedly one of the strongest shapes to form, right? But why would an ancient culture build that? What's the purpose of that? You know, and there's lots of theories behind the pyramids, like their uh, ancient battery technology or a power source or communication. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of different theories about it. But if you think about it, like the ancient Greeks didn't really build pyramids; they built more like a square building. Why is that shape important to that culture? What does it serve?